late afternoon of the 26th of June, U.S. time, we received information that there had been an altercation in Korea and found out that we had been alerted uh, to go to Korea. And my battalion was attached to the 1st Marine Division for the uh, battle for Seoul. And we remained attached to the 1st Marine Division until Seoul had been secured. The Chinese had clearly signaled that if American forces continued to advance to the Yalu, they would enter the war because there's no way the Chinese wanted the United States on their border, which occasioned their entry into the war. And the Chinese chose to build up north of Seoul and also in central Korea, north of Wanju. Wanju was a critical rail and road junction. MacArthur uh, ordered 8th Army that we would hold what we call the Wanju salient. My company, and I was the company commander, uh, we were given a mission of taking Hill 342, which was a key peak uh, north of Wanju, uh, 10 o'clock at night. Uh, I ordered my company to attack the uh, 342, the main position, which was then occupied by about two companies of Chinese. And we successfully took the hill. They retreated to the base of the hill and uh, were reinforced by a battalion and started a counterattack. So the fight went on all night. Around midnight, 12.30, something like that, I got hit uh, by a grenade and lost my arm. The temperature was like 30 below zero, bitter cold. So blood congealed immediately, which saved many lives, strangely enough. My first sergeant wrapped it up. I had no pain. I continued to lead my company. And uh, about an hour later, I got hit again and it took the leg. Uh, which, of course, then put me down. My company held a hill, beat off the repeated attacks by a Chinese battalion, which was four times that of my company. That was left of my company. I already had about 37 casualties on the hill, dead and wounded. They were the, you know, the, the key leaders, the squad leaders, platoon leaders. Uh, they're the ones that you know, get hit first because of their location and what they're doing. But my company held the hill. When daylight came, 342 still belonged to K Company at 187. People who come to the Korean Memorial are justifiably awed by its magnificent artistry. And that's what it is, a magnificent work of art. I'm proud to have been a part of its development. But what it is not is a memorial because the requirement to honor both service and sacrifice is missing in that memorial. It honors service, but it doesn't honor sacrifice because it is an unknown to the visitor. It helps to make the Korean War a forgotten war in American history. Nobody has ever had it brought to their attention what that war cost. It was, in terms of percentage of casualties, the bloodiest foreign war America has ever fought. It's a tragedy that one of the, one of the greatest things our, our country did, to, to go to help a people when we weren't threatened, the very essence of what our democracy is all about, that someone must pay the price for freedom we chose to do it in Korea, and we don't acknowledge it in the history of our country.